inside a trolley, wait for no man. Let her go, motorman. Thank you all for coming. My name is Joe Bella, I'm president of the Friends of the Lawrence Heritage State Park, and I want to welcome you all aboard our wonderful trolley tour here at the festival. Um, the, park, the park here is the uh, Philip J. O'Connell Park, and named in memory of World War I soldier Philip J. O'Connell, who was killed in action August 1st, 1918, somewhere in France. So the South Lawrence Connell, named after Mr. O'Connell, the late Mr. O'Connell. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to be heading down Market Street, and we're going to take a right turn at the next intersection, and another right onto Salem Street. As you people may... Keep your arms and heads and everything else inside the trolley, please. I see a little hand and a head sticking out on this side. If I can see them, that's not a good thing. Okay, arms, heads, inside. And let's keep it that way. Okay, we're going to be heading to Salem Street. Now, when Lawrence was founded early, early on, the town fathers decided to put the downtown here in South Lawrence on what's now known as Salem Street. And you'll notice the street is wide at certain spots after we take the turn here and it's sort of widen. And again, this was designated Lawrence's first downtown. Then they, uh, they changed their mind and moved the downtown north, not Lawrence, on what is now Essex Street, the business district. But again, this was the that designated first choice for the downtown business district, but later changed. And again, we have on your right, we have the uh, Philip J. O'Connell Park, named after the World War I soldier killed in uh, 1918. We're going to be heading toward the uh, next set of lights onto South Union Street. And we'll be taking a right, right turn at the lights onto South Union, which is a continuation from North Union, on Union Street on the north side of the city. And uh, on your left, we'll get, we're passing what used to be Joe's Bungalow, now gone. We used to have the best chicken barbecues in Merrimack Valley, if not further. The best. And on your left, this large building once housed the bowling alley known as the Ridgewood Lanes. Ridgewood Bowling Alley. And uh, that's gone. It's basically apartments. And next is uh, Ponto Pizza. And after that, Dunkin' Donuts. So, uh, again, on your right is the uh, O'Connor Park. And the uh, bandstand was dedicated to another military person. Ten days before I was born, May 20th, 1946, that was also designated the uh, bandstand for a uh, soldier in World War II. And we're going to be heading up South Union, up to uh, the Duck Bridge, after we cross a few lights. And you'll notice on your left, Jackson Lumber, the second location for Jackson Lumber. The first was being on Jackson Street when the company opened in the early 1920s, 30s. And then they moved here later. And on your right, the M. O. Mahoney Company. And that's been there for quite a while. Ready? One, two, three. And we're going to be continuing straight on South Union, Duck Bridge. Duck Bridge originally was wood when it was first built. In around 1880s, there was a terrible fire. The bridge completely was completely engulfed in flames. It burnt and fell into the river. And the burning piece kept on floating to Kimball's Island at the point of Methuen and Hazel Line. It was an island there that's still there. The bridge continued burning the rest of the day. And then they built the metal bridge as you see it here today, which is just uh, 
recently been in, uh, restored and painted. Do you know how it got its name, the Duck Bridge? Yes. Uh, one of the first mills in the city, when the city was first founded in 1847, was called the Duck Mill because the cloth was water resistant. It was like water rolling off a duck's back. And they made tents and other type of material, um, diff much different than just plain cloth. So this was called duck cloth, named the duck mill. And they're on the other side, they're on the north side of the uh, Merrimack River. And you have a question? Oh, that's the, the coins there. That's the, uh, that used to be in front of the uh, Lawrence Hi. Library. Then it was moved here in front of the uh, McGovern Transportation Center. And that was done by Mr. Pasella. Pasella Forge Company on Essex Street. Mr. Pasella Sr., the late Pasella Sr. had made that sculpture. Had it made for the new Lawrence Library and then later it was moved here to the McGovern Station after this was built. The dock mills were on the left-hand side, and they even went as far as extending to the sidewalk at one time, and then later that was removed. All this is being redone, and they're going to be converted into condominiums for people to live in. Now we're continuing, now we're on Union Street, we just crossed the uh, North Canal Bridge, the North Canal, and on your left will be heading to by the Essex Company. The Essex Company here, brick wall, brick building, actually founded and helped build the city of Lawrence as we know it today. And then on your right is the second Everett Mill, and I'll explain the first Everett Mill later on. And we just passed uh, Holy Rosary at Christie Pass. And we're going to be taking a right onto General Street, which used to be Garden Street. Now these series of buildings, this used to be a block called the Mechanics Block. And the workers, the mechanics of the stone mill, I'm going to be showing you shortly, lived in these houses. And it was a square of brick row houses forming a perfect square. Now here on your right was the Lawrence Machine Company. And they helped to, um, in the construction in take the you know, maintenance of the canals, the North and South Canal, as well as the dam here in the city of Lawrence after it was built. And then certain mills did use the um, machinery for repair work and uh, maintenance, general maintenance on the certain mills. The city later sold the building to the Everett Corporation and that was then known as the Everett Mill, which we call the first Everett Mill. And then around 1900, they decided to build this brick mill here on your right. And that was the second Everett Mill, as you see it today. So there's the first Everett, the second Everett Mill. Okay, we're gonna continue up General Street. And on your left is the James F. Leonard School, which I went to years ago. And it's um, still in pretty good shape. And we're crossing the Spicket River and the new, new bridge here. And then, then there's the Lawrence General Hospital. Uh, it was built on the site of the Russell Mansion, or the Russell home, which the family, the Russell family donated the land to the Ladies Charitable Society here in Lawrence, later forming what's known as Lawrence General Hospital. And they've been adding bits and pieces over the years, remodeling and modernizing it. And we're going up to Prospect Street, and ahead is Prospect Hill. And it's called Prospect because basically of the view from this site of the city of Lawrence. And we're gonna continue on Prospect and then head, take a first right turn onto Canal. And ahead is a stone, beautiful stone building, which is the last of the Russell Paper Company, right here on the right side of this uh, section, which used to be Ralph Pill Electric Company. Mm -hmm. And that stone building, of course, is in danger of being taken down. Several letters have been written to the mayor to stop that from occurring. 
So time will tell, we shall see what will happen. And this here on your left is the new park, unnamed, but it's the site of what was the Ferris Technology uh, area. And also, um, Hiram Mills opened the first experimental station on this site, and it's known as Island Street, or Island area. Again, this is all Island Street, because primarily it's on an island, the North Canal, which is the larger of the two canals, on one side, and the Merrimack River on the other side. And this is one of the new, newer bridges. That was, this wasn't here earlier, this is new, just been installed. And on the right hand side was the former um, paper champion international paper company, which made paper for the uh, National Geographic magazines until it closed in the late 1970s. And Greco Brothers here on the right hand side, uh, now it's uh, commercial rental space, office space. Now we're going to be stopping in front of the second Pemberton Mill on your left. As we pass this bridge. And again, this is the second Pemberton Mill. The first Pemberton Mill on January 10th, 1860, quarter five, it collapsed. It just fell one floor at a time. And about 88 people had perished, um, 12 or 13 unidentified. That night, when they were trying to look, look for the casualties, a lantern fell over. And a lot of stuff there was highly flammable, and everything caught fire. And the rest of the survivors burned in the ruins. They couldn't save them. So again, a total of 88 people died when the, this, the earlier mill collapsed. Now, the, the factory had um, stockbrokers, and they were very well insured. The factory itself was highly insured. So less than two or three years later, they were able to build this building in place of the first, uh, the ruins of the first that collapsed. The reason why the mill collapsed was the columns that held, that held up these floors, they weren't made properly. One side of the column was very thin, the other side it was proper thickness. So with all the weight of the machinery, the building used to vibrate during the busy times of the day. Finally, they, they couldn't take the weight, and on January 10th, 1860, it just fell, in one on top of another, like a deck of cards. And then at nighttime, the lantern overturned, caught fire, and the rest of the survivors burned. And the bodies were brought to the basement of the uh, city hall, which did have a basement for them. And then I had you see the tower of the air mill, the air mill clock tower, which is the uh, first of the largest mill clock tower in the world. It's the second largest clock tower, beaten by Big Ben in London, St. Stephen's Tower in London, Big Ben, is six inches larger than that face. So Big Ben is the largest, this is the second largest in the world. Really? But but the first largest, the only large mill clock tower or clock face in America. So it's the largest uh, mill clock. Okay, we're gonna continue here on Canal Street. Again, this is the North Canal, the larger of both North and South Canals. And on your left, we're passing by the newer version of the Washington Mill. This building replaced the earlier brick, the older brick style. So this would be a newer uh, style brick around World War II. I think that it was, um, the old brick was taken down. And this replaced the older section of the Washington Mills. And then ahead is the Washington Mills apartments. Um, people can live, before they used to work there, now you can live there. And on the right hand side is number one Mill Street, where the paymasters pay used to pay the mill workers their salaries or their paychecks here every week. Then on the right also is the Lawrence Heritage State Park, open every day, nine to four. It's the first remaining of the two row houses built for the mill workers to live and work. They used to live there, across the canal, work in the mills, and went back home. This is the first one, and the other one is further down the corner of, of Amesbury and Canal. And here on your left, again, is the Pacific, the lower Pacific mills. And it is a date, you can see it above 18, 
Oh, I can't see it. But anyway, it's 18. That's Gold Pacific Mills original. This is the original part of the mill as you see it today. And I think part of it further down will be used uh, for uh, offices or uh, condominiums. The Upper Pacific Mills used to be on Pemberton Park, and those were taken down around the Depression time. So those are gone. We just have remaining the Lower Pacific Mills. Okay, we're going on to Lawrence Street. And on your right is the Judge Fenton Courthouse. Uh, within 20, 25 years, that's fairly new. And then we're going to be passing where one of the best Lawrence theaters is located. And this parking lot for the bank, Santander Bank, was the Warner Brothers, or the Warner Theater, which was a very popular theater. Um, even movie stars used to come here years and years ago. It replaced a vaudeville place called the Cato, C-A-T-O. Okay, on your right, the Bay State Building, when it was built, it was the largest building north of Boston uh, for many years. And then on your left here, the early Lawrence buildings in the city, and I knew it as the Arlington Trust Bank for years and years until they uh, closed the bank. Uh, now it's the um, community action location, and I guess it's a daycare center now. And the old Lawrence Police Station used to be at this corner, both of them. They had an early wooden structure, 1880s, took that down, 1920s, a yellow stone building, took that down and built a new police station on Lowell Street, opposite the Lowell side of the station. Okay, we're going on to Common Street. Again, on your left is the Campione Common. Uh, for years, this was known as the North Lawrence Common. In World War II, three of the Campione family brothers were killed in Europe in World War II. There was a fort which they managed to uh, bring back alive. Uh, there would have been four. So there were actually three brothers um, who were killed in World War II. And so they, after the war, they had a uh, ceremony. There's a monument on the other side, near the Cable Street end, and there's a monument to the three Campioni brothers. Okay, there used to be a church, beautiful church, here on your right, now a parking lot, and they moved to North Andover. And the City Hall, built 1849-1850, the only original part of the City Hall is its tower. And even then, they've gone, uh, they've had to repair or restore certain sections of that. The building, original building was built in early 1849-50s and remodeled in 1922-23, as you see it today. Both the interior and exterior has undergone a tremendous change um, since up until 1922-23, again, restored both inside and outside. Okay, now we're gonna continue. And past the city hall is the Superior Court. Had a nice set of uh, a nice set of weather vanes on the and a set of a nice weather vane on the tower. It did have a tower which was blown down during one of the large hurricanes of the 1950s. This is the older part of the courthouse. This building here on your right also was a stable for a lot of the uh, local city horses were stabled there before automobiles, trucks, and so forth. Um, that type of vehicles. Um, everything was moved by horse, horse power. And again, these were stables that were used to house horses working for the city way back. Okay, we're going to take a right turn onto Jackson. And head on your, quickly head on your left is the old uh, Grace Church, stone church. The stone material was built from the material when the Great Stone Dam was built. So the stone work came from the dam uh, as they were building it. Uh, yeah, we're going to be taking the right onto Essex Street. A lot of these buildings here, downtown Lawrence, the brick buildings primarily have been here since the, uh, the beginning of the downtown. And again, it's the second chosen spot for downtown, this Essex Street. The first, of course, was Salem Street, South Lawrence. And the town fathers changed locations and decided to put downtown here on Essex Street, name it Essex in, uh, for Essex County. And again, a lot of the buildings, uh, some of them had to be uh, replaced due to um, bad maintenance of fires and so forth, but most of the brick buildings as you see them here have been restored. 
And the building on your left here, that's been restored completely. Uh, that was an, an older, larger brick building that needed to be replaced. And again, both sides, um, you see a lot of brick trim. That shows that the building is quite old. And this, on the left, was originally a bank. And that has retained its uh, original look. I like this building here on the, on the left, the pillars built in. Okay, then we continue on Essex and then take a left turn onto Amesbury Street. And there's the Community Action Council. That used to be a department store, Cherry and Webb, Sutherland's, years ago. And then, believe it or not, W.T. Grants was located here. Um, way back in the 50s, 60s. We had our own W.T. Grant Company. And on the right was Presky's Five and Dime, which had to be removed and replaced by the newer structure as you see it today. So we're going to take a left to turn on to Amesbury Street. And the low brick building down here, the dark brick building, replaces the Lawrence Armory that was built here early 1900s and taken down in the 1970s. Um, it was a very large, large building. And they had all types of events, Christmas parties and so forth. In fact, when I was younger, um, the Howdy Doody show, the characters came here for a Christmas party one year. And that's, I won't say what year, but it was in the, around the 50s when I was quite young then. Okay, the second row house is here on your right. And again, the row house is where people lived here and would cross the street and work at the mills and then come back here to live and stay. And this is the second one. The Lawrence Heritage State Park is the first uh, of the two row houses left. Canal Street used to be lined with this type of building, almost to Broadway and Union Street. We take a right turn headed into Pepperton Park. And some people have, have a little bit of confusion. They think that the Pemberton Mill was here. Well, the Pemberton Mill wasn't. As I showed you earlier, the Pemberton Mill, Mill itself was about two blocks uh, further east. Okay, now this area did have, like I said before, the Upper Pacific Mills. Six stories extended from near the bridge, O'Leary Bridge, almost to Broadway. Very, very large factory building, all entirely of brick. Um, it was taken down, I would say, around the Depression era. And then on the right-hand side, there was a department store called Samson's. And I and my family, friends, we all used to shop here. It was the earlier department store, one of the early department stores here in the city of Lawrence, Samson's, back then. And the area was known way back as Turtle Bay because this area used to flood every spring. And after the water receded, the turtles used to come up here and lay their eggs. And then after that, weeks after, baby turtles would cover the place, literally. And uh, then the name Turtle Bay came from that. And there was a store, a clothing store, on the right through the down called Turtle Bay Clothing. And I think it's gone now. So this is Pepperton Park, an extension of the park was uh, put together recently, and it's called, let's see, Worker's Place. Yep. Worker's Place, and people can relax and watch the river and take a break. And there are some people, there's benches anyway, for people to sit and relax, and the river is just ahead there. Okay, again, we're going to be going on to Broadway. And we'll be crossing over the Broadway Bridge. And the, the gatekeeper's house is ahead of us. And they would sort of less, more or less control water coming from the um, river into the canal, the North Canal. And again, the North Canal is the larger of the two canals, North and South. Yeah. Did people actually live in those? They did. Way, way back. They used to, yeah. Now, they took care of the, they had to take care of the uh, lots on the canal with the water from the river entering. It had to be adjusted, and they had to be here. 
now and now company from Italy owns the dam and both canals. And now, largest dam when it was built, very very large. They used to have boards on the top. They had to be installed by workers by hand with rafts. Very dangerous. Now what they did was they replaced the boards with the automatic hydraulic system. Yeah, they those pillows, right? They inflate, they inflate, they inflate, they're just the push of a button. They're able to raise the water up high or lower it to bring more water over the dam. Is that what the siren is that you hear? I think so, yeah, probably. And here's the South Canal, beginning. And we're going to take a right turn onto Shattuck Street. Now we're in South Broadway. South Broadway. Yes. A lot of businesses have changed, have come and gone in this area. The neighborhood has changed. Okay, we're going to be headed toward the second experimental station site. The first, of course, being on Island Street that we just saw near the first technology site. The experimental station checks your drinking water 24-7. And it was named in memory of Senator, the late Senator Willie X. Wall very prominent in Lawrence politics, city councilor for years and years, and he was a doer uh, in his time. Very great, big guy. I, I, met, I used to see him, but no, no, never know, knew him personally, but he was very, very uh, personable and friendly and did a quite a bit for the city in his day. Okay, now we're coming to Riverfront Park, and we're going to be going to the boat ramp parking lot. The park itself was named uh, after a World War I veteran. And we're going to be going down a trail along the river toward the A. Bishara Boathouse up ahead. But this, uh, this trail that we're going to be going to was where the Lawrence poet Robert Frost and his then girlfriend, later wife Eleanor, used to uh, walk through during the summer months. And it's a beautiful walk, a uh, beautiful area. As you, as you go in that walkway though, you have to keep your arms in, and that's everybody, keep your arms in, don't, right, keep away from the window. Some of these trees are very low, and they might have to um, cut into you. That's the bell. Okay. And there's the beautiful Merrimack River on your right. People bring, bring their boats throughout the summer. Okay. A lot of walkers and bicyclists here uh, every summer. This is where Robert Frost, the poet Robert Frost, would bring his girlfriend, Eleanor, uh, every summer. And they both went to Lawrence High School, the old Lawrence High, and they both graduated. Of course, you know, Robert Frost went on to be a very, very, very famous paint, uh, poet. And his granddaughter, I understand, is coming to the city next week. She's going to be uh, doing a talk or a lecture on her grandfather. And this part of the city doesn't remind me of a city, it reminds me of the country. And I feel like I'm in New Hampshire or Vermont. Uh, Some place away from the city of Lawrence it has that, that look. And again, there's the beautiful Merrimack River on your right. Much cleaner than it had been over the years. Uh, the EPA, since the EPA was formed, they've sort of helped uh, do a continuously uh, a cleanup of the river. So it's much better than it had been when, uh, after the mills were going in, in full production, dumping all their pollutants into this river, as they have been doing over the years, from up uh, Manchester, Nashua, uh, Lowell, and as well as including Lawrence at that time in Haverhill. But again, that has stopped completely, thank goodness. And you see on your left, a lot of these trees are left here, forests. And again, it doesn't remind me of Lawrence at all. It reminds me of being in the country. Very relaxing and quiet. And we're going to be approaching the parking lot of the Bishara Boathouse. Uh, 
built and donated by the Bishara brothers, who used to own and run Bishop's Restaurant until the year 2000-2001, uh, they had to close. Bishop's Restaurant was basically New England known. Uh, people in Boston used to come to Bishop's and they knew of its uh, location. Uh, the, uh, Bishop's Restaurant was the place to go in the city of Lawrence in its day. I thoroughly enjoyed the food there and entertainment. It was quite a place I and mean, we all miss it. But the Bisharas built the boathouse and every summer there's a community boating program that takes place that anyone can sign up for uh, after after the winter time. June 25th they're having a festival thing. June 25th. And is that the canoe? The yeah, yeah. Yep. So they have, they have various events here in the summertime. Check the newspaper for the location and the dates and times. Okay, now we're going to be leaving the boathouse area. And look, this area is basically residential, always has been. Basically homes, houses. It's pretty, pretty well uh, maintained, pretty well taken care of. And this area has had its uh, share of famous people living basically South Lawrence in the area. One is Dama Todd. Uh, Dama Todd and her family never owned their home. Um, for some reason they just rented and they lived in roughly four or five different houses here in the South, South Lawrence area. The someone was born in South Broadway, the house no longer exists. And also living in the South Lawrence area was the great imposter, Fred, uh, Fred DeMara, and which there was a movie with Tony Curtis called The Great Imposter, based on this character from Lawrence. We're also approaching what was known as the Shanty Pond section of the city of Lawrence, South Lawrence. Okay, we're going to be going down Salem Street, continuing through Salem. And again, this primarily was known as Shanty Pond. The Irish came from Ireland into the city. 1840s helped build the dam. They needed a place to live, so they basically lived or had their small houses here. Again, it was known as Shanty Pond. <coughs> and lately, as of late, the newest immigrants, basically the Vietnamese, and some of these stores um, they own and run here in South uh, South Lawrence, on the South Broadway. Okay, ahead on the right is the. Um, St. Patrick's Church, been here quite a few years. Um, the back part of the church was quite uh, heavily damaged in 1890 when the Great Cyclone uh, hit here in South Lawrence. And it kind of started in this area and continued uh, east along Market Street, Springfield Street, caused considerable damage until finally it, it subsided. But a lot of homes were overturned. Uh, there were casualties, a few few minor casualties, but it was considered a cyclone then. Today we would probably consider it a, a tornado. Again, the, like I said, the back of the church was quite heavily damaged. And the church is, is run maintained by the Archdiocese of Boston. I'm going to take a right turn onto Merrimack Street. And this used to be Three Dogs Diner, and now it's the Rancho Brazil just reopened. Uh, Merrimack Paper used to be on the left here, and um, one of the oldest of the paper mills, not as old as the Russell Paper Company, but fairly old, and it had some fires. Now the building is being demolished and scrutinized by the EPA. It's carefully being demolished. And it'll be disappearing shortly. And it was one of the last of the mills that used water power, I was told, uh, recently. And again, this is the South Canal, the smaller of the two canals. And there are some businesses that still uh, are in operation, are still are in existence here between the canal and the Merrimack River on your left. And we're going to continue straight through, crossing Parker Street. Wasn't there a lot around here too? Um, that would be 1930. 36, 37 flood. Yeah, most all this was underwater. Very disastrous flood. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there was a um, furniture factory here, and that burned. And after the fire, they found a lot of toxics in the grounds. So that was another one of the uh, so-called uh, brownfields, uh, declared brownfields. So that EPA made sure that that was cleaned up before it could be uh, transferred by ownership to somebody else to purchase it. And I think on Pemberton Park did have brownfields as well years ago, but that also has been cleaned up, as has uh, Champion International Paper Company on Canal Street across the hill. That was also cleaned up, and it took years for that to be cleaned up. Okay, ahead on your left is the uh, Frederick Air Mill, A-Y-E-R. Hey, Mr. Noisy. And then across from the air mill is the William Wood Mill, even though it's made out of brick. It's called the Wood Mill because it was built by the uh, president of the American Woolen Company, William Wood. Now, he named this building the air mill because he married Mr. Ayer's daughter. So to keep him good with the family, he decided to name this Ayer and the other mill his own name, Wood. Mr. Ayer was an industrialist from Lowell, primarily. And um, I can tell you before about the tower. That clock tower, again, the clock itself, the face is the second largest in the world, beat out by Big Ben, St. Stephen's Tower in London, six inches difference but it is considered the largest mill clock in the world uh, by our standards. And again, the wood mill across the street, both mills did not use water power, which is why the South Canal ends here. It's a shorter canal, so they didn't need the water power to build those two mills. They later changed to steam and then electricity. So the South Canal ends right here, whereas the North Canal is much longer and continued and also was much older. I remember on the first floor of the mill was beef and macaroni. They made macaroni and distributed it for years and years until they moved to Lowell. Take it a right here, right? Yeah, you can take a right turn up uh, South Union and as we pass the um, turn on your left is the McGovern, Patricia McGovern Transportation Center. Here's where you take the train to and from Boston. And those uh, little coins, that sculpture was located at the New Lawrence Library and it was moved here when they built the transportation center. The sculpture was built by the late Sam Fasella, who had Fasella uh, Foundry or Forge on Essex Street for years and years. Now his son has taken over. And again, Jackson Lumber, the second Jackson Lumber site on your right. Okay, we're gonna be taking a left turn onto Market Street. Oh, this is M.O. Mahoney's, uh, named after the M.O. Mahoney Company that was here probably a hundred odd years ago. Um, but someone else, it's not by owned by the Mahoney family at all. It's owned by new owners who still kept the name, which I'm glad they did. But that is a landmark um, from the O'Mahony family of 100 plus years ago. So that's been a regular business for a long, long time on this corner. And again, Market Street, we're heading back to the O'Connell uh, Park, named after the World War I uh, soldier who was killed in 1918, fighting in France. Well, I want to thank you all for coming on this tour. And see you again. And don't forget the driver. Thank you again, and be careful as you exit. Watch the stairway. I'm tied a trolley. Wait for no man. Let her go, motorman. Ding, 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 what the bell? Ding, ding.